Hi everyone. In this mini program, you're going to count the vowels. So you're going to write a program that takes a string input, uh, which could be a word or a sentence, doesn't really matter what it is, and counts how many times each of the five vowel characters have been repeated in that string and returns the result. So go ahead, attempt the challenge, and see you uh, after three seconds with my solution. All right, so how was it? I'm sure you did great. First, let's grab the string from the user. I'm just going to say input, enter a word slash sentence. The user can enter anything. Then uh, let's create a variable that is going to say vowels, vowels, ELS, A E I O U. And then we are going to create a dictionary. Let's say create that, and then we're going to use the from keys method. And uh, let's pass in here the vowels that we have. Initially, we are going to set it to zero. Let's print this dictionary. So I'm just going to say count. Let's run this program, and it is going to ask. I'm going to say earth, which is very easy to pronounce. So you can see that we have A has not been repeated. E has not been repeated, I has not been repeated, and none of these has been repeated because we have not actually counted those. We have just grabbed those and we have created a dictionary. We have not counted how many times. That's why the zero is taking precedence. So now if we go ahead and if we say counting vowels, we can say for char in string uh, if char in uh, count, then we want to say count. Now, the cool thing is that you can see that this looks like a dictionary. And if I say char here, it is going to grab each key value pair. And I'm going to add on to it using the augmented assignment operator. Then at the end, I'm going to say print count. Perfect. So let's run it again. I'm going to say earth. And there we go. So you can see that before actually counting, nothing is there. And after counting, we have uh, we have A, E. Uh, we have A. We don't have E. Why is that? Because this E is actually uppercase. So we need to de-case sensitize every word that the user enters. So if I say earth... Now, erath, it, it is erath. So now you can see we have one A, one E, no I, no O, and no U. But if I run it again, if I say transmitting from Earth, enter, there we go. So we have two A's, one E, two I's. We do have two I's. So, and then we have one L. With this, our mini programs come to an end. And uh, so, uh, so does this chapter. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I did enjoy it and I'm sure you did enjoy it. Uh, there were a lot of cool stuff, a lot of a little bit more complicated and a little bit easier. And um, I'm sure um, you have learned a lot. The reason behind this chapter was to just um, give you some space so you can think, you can come up with a solution of your own choice, not like follow my style every time. The solutions that I've provided here, they're just here to give you an idea. They're not like here for you to just copy and paste. That's why I told you, I asked you to pause the video and come up with your own solution just to give you some breathing space, some privacy so you can think, you can come up with a solution uh, just to provide you with that, with that stressful environment, stressful situation when you are in an interview. I'm, I know that this doesn't resemble it like remotely but um, this thinking is what matters the most that problem solving skills that you that you need to polish that you need to master that's what actually counts so uh, whenever when you if you're a beginner when you start coding like with python it is going to take very small le very little time for example in three months or in a month if you are very hard working 
you will be able to understand most of the beginner to advanced concepts. But that's not the difficult part. The difficult part is to actually implementing them in a real world scenario. And that's that was what that was the point, the goal, and the ideology behind this chapter. That I wanted you to come up with a way to put everything you have learned, at least most of it, um, to good use and to actually come up with a solution to solve something and to actually feel good about what you've learned. And throughout this chapter, I'm sure um, uh, there are some of you, there are some of you that have mastered basically everything. There are others uh, that might might be unsure or doubtful about some concepts that you can go back to. That is the whole idea of this chapter, that you need to assess yourself, that you need to think about where you are and where you need to go. Because from now on, we're basically done with the, uh, the nitty gritty Python stuff. We are going to take this course to the next level from the next chapter onwards. We are going to, I'm going to give you a full SQL course I'm going to give you a full HTML5 front-end web development course. I'm going to give you a full CSS3 front-end web development course. You're going to have projects. You're going to have web scraping. You're going to have graphic graphical user interfaces. You're going to have a lot more coming in our next chapters. That's why I wanted to be really sure. I wanted you to feel sure of yourself that you can go forward without any doubt. And by the end of this chapter, I'm sure you are at that point, at the point that I want you to be. So you can come with me to our SQL course. And um, this is a bundle of so many courses, like almost seven, eight courses. That's why it is like a little bit longer than usual. There are so many chapters, like tens of chapters. Uh, because I want to give you like a good experience, a good value for your money. And I want to make sure that when you start this course and when you end it, you are very much job ready and you know what to do. You know where you, where you want to go next. I don't want to uh, take your hands as you are confused and as you don't know anything about programming and throughout this course confuse you even further and scare you away from programming. I want to take your hand as you don't know anything and e even if you do, it doesn't really matter and guide you through this process of learning Python. This process that is very beautiful and actually show you that, uh, that you can create something very beautiful with code, but it is always going to be code. It's not going to be anything more than that. Like you cannot create like something uh, very, very like, like a human. And this is uh, what I'm actually what I actually mean is at the end of the day, you matter more than the code that you write. So you need to be careful about your health, about your about the way that you think about coding. Coding is very cool, but uh, on its own, it's not like it's not as priceless as you are. Every individual person who starts coding, their code is important, but the person who codes is is supremely more important than the code that they write because they are the ones that, that, are, that are creating this code. You are the one that you're creating this co uh, code. And you need to be very careful how you want to start a course, how you want to end it, because this time that you, that you spend on this course, you'll, you are never going to get it back. So make sure you spend it wisely. If there is anything that you're not sure about, uh, Everything is at your disposal. I'm available in the Q&A 24-7. I wouldn't say 24-7. I would say I would try to answer your questions within 24 hours. That's what I'm striving to. I may not be available. I may not be able to do it all the time, like 100%, but I would like to keep my record of 90% of 24-hour answers. And they're going to be answered within 48 hours. No questions asked. Definitely, 100%. So you are more important than everything that you write because you are the human and this is just a computer. Keep that in mind. You have the soul. The computer doesn't have a soul. That is the most important thing. And, uh, and I want you to really understand your value uh, in this world because we do need as many developers in, the, in this community as possible, but 
we need to have people who can distinguish between something that is typed and someone who types it. So there is a lot of stuff there. And I don't want to like uh, go into that depth because this is like a little bit of a philosophical topic, which I'm really fond of. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit um, about my own ideas so we can connect and we can move for forward. Because from now on, throughout this course, from this chapter onwards, we are going to do things differently. We are going to talk about stuff you've never heard of. We are going to discuss topics that are completely alien to you. And I want you to know that I'm always going to be there to answer your questions and you will have a good time and a good value for your money, of course. So with this, our chapter comes to an end. See you in the next awesome part of this course, which is going to be really, really, really amazing. So see you then.